Well, good morning, Drew. Great to see you. Good morning. Nice to see you, too. It's always our pleasure. And um, I want to start with last year at the World Indoors. Um, I thought it was a tremendously exciting race. Uh, tell us about that race, your motivation, um, and um, what it meant to you. Um, for sure, that race meant a lot to me because um, not only was I representing Dion Lendo, but um, I was always also representing my grandmother that passed away and my um, my grandfather's brother who recently passed away in the same amount of time. So I had three people that passed away in my life that was important for me to represent and I really wanted to dedicate that race to them. Um, so in a sense, um, I had somewhat of a pressure going into the race, but um, I was also very yeah. motivated and you know, I felt um, you know, just ready to compete yeah. and to perform in that race and successfully, I mean, it was successful, you know, so um, I feel really good about it and it was at first um, a stressful race, as I said, it was kind yeah. of stressful because I knew what it had at stake for me and I knew what I wanted to do. Also, going into the World Indoor Championships, you, I would have heard the commentators um, say that it would have been a storybook finish for me to be you know, the winner of this um, race. So in my, in my mind, I was like, well, okay, people expect you to win, so this is added pressure. But yeah. um, thankfully, I compete well under pressure, so I use that as motivation also to be successful. But that race really meant a lot to me. It propelled me very well throughout this indoor season. And um, even um, heading out to the outdoor season in 2022, it propelled me very well. Talk to me about your experience at the World Outdoor Championships in Eugene. Uh, it was it was bittersweet, I would say for me. Um, I was able to back up my 19 second run in Trinidad and Tobago, running 1986 in the semi-final. Um, a lot of people say that Trinidad and Tobago has a short track and um, people only run fast in Trinidad and Tobago, so I was glad to prove a lot of people wrong that, you know, I could run fast anyway. And, um, you know, that was just a blessing for me, but this, this, that was the sweet part, but the bitter part was finishing th sixth. Um, I felt like um, last year I was at best as, as I ever was. Um, yeah. The best form by far I ever was in my life, you know, so... To be at your best and not finish on the podium is kind of a hard blow also, but I still was grateful and thankful because I know at the end of the day, this was the best that I had to offer and, you know, um, it was sixth place. Um, I think given a different lane, I think I would have been a little bit better off, but I looked on the bright side. Um, the year before in the Tokyo Olympics, I finished eighth out of lane two. Yeah. And this time around, I finished um, sixth out of lane three. So, um, you know, sometimes in the midst of disappointment and, um, you know, you're just feeling down, you still have to look at the brighter side of stuff. So that's kind of what I um, use to motivate myself. And also a sweet part of it heading into the Commonwealth Games, I was like, well, okay, you didn't do well in the World Championship, so you didn't do as good as you wanted to do. So you now need to use that as fuel for the fire heading into the Commonwealth Games, which I did, and I ran a PR in um, not favorable weather, as our people would say. I even heard before a lot of people was telling me, well, Birmingham track is not a fast track. Yeah. It was for me. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. so. I think it's um, a killer. Yeah. What I've learned this year is in the midst of everything, try to use. Um, positives and negatives are something to propel you forward regardless of what the situation so I used every each and every situation as something to move me forward in um, 2022 and I'll continue to do that going forward as a track and field athlete and in sure. life also the Commonwealth crowd was fantastic it, it was, was so loud every day it was beautiful I, I remember I was really surprised for the medal ceremony at I think maybe 8 30 7 30 in the morning the stadium was packed I was like you all have nothing to do to be outside this early in the morning, yeah. but I was very thankful for it because the crowd was beautiful. I really enjoyed the crowd in Birmingham. Um, they made me feel like I was at home running, you know? Yeah, so I, it, it was a definitely a great experience and a great crowd. So you've competed in three outdoor worlds, mm -hmm. two Commonwealth games? Three. Three Commonwealth Yeah. And then two Olympics? Yeah, two. 16 yeah. and? 16 and, yeah, and 21, 20. yeah. 
I met you in London in 17 mm -hmm. at the medal ceremony. Um, are you a 200 or a 400 guy? Because um, I, you know, I, I'm fascinated with that because I think you're incredible at the 400. Is that somewhere where you and Coach are going to concentrate on or outdoors? Or what are you thinking right now? So, um, I think I'm a 2-4 athlete and I even think I have possibility to be a guy that could probably break 10 seconds in 100 also. Um, but for sure, I'm a better 2-4 guy. Mm -hmm. um, something I definitely want to focus on because I feel like I've not live up to my full potential in the 400 as yet yeah. and as i get older um i've been able to show that i have the ability even more and more you know so um definitely something for the outdoor season i like to um take up the 400 meters a little bit more and show my versatility as an athlete being able to you know run different events and not just be a one trick pony as you know as sure. the, the saying goes um so that's definitely something i look forward for to running fast times in the in the 400 meters and also um you know better in my times in the 200 meters as well and maybe if the 200 times get fast enough dip down into the 100 to see how fast that speed could that would be fun to see yeah you seem to really get pumped up for the four by four yeah what is it about is it because it's competing for your country mm -hmm. and you know the guys really well yeah um for me it's like it's the only event that you come together as a team yeah um track and field is known as an individual event except for release and I just like the ability to feed off the energy of your teammates and um, you know just to come together to show one finished product and to get the button around the track and you know finish successfully so I'm always excited and I just love to run relays because it, it, it it's a different feeling and it, to me it tap into a different type of energy in relays versus um, an individual event I will always put myself on the line for uh, Trinidad and Tobago in a 4x4 any day and um, you know, we, we always go out there and do our best to make our country proud. So just the national pride part of it also is, you know, something really important for us. How long have you worked with Coach Lance? Um, this year would be my third year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is and I just saw someone on Instagram. Was you and Wayne? Uh, yeah. And Noah Williams. Yeah. What were you guys doing? Were you doing 300s? Uh, that was a, that was, mm, this was a, this was a, actually a, a good day. I think we had, I think we had a 420 and, um, maybe five one twenties after um four twenty was kind of hot so we went through four hundred really fast and um i really like the dynamic that we have we, yeah. we we all motivate each other if if after a rep weed is on the ground i'm on the ground noah's on the ground we motivate each other come on one more rep don't go down yet come on you know we we push each other because we all want to run fast we all want to see each other run fast and um i think to have that dynamic as a team is uh uh, very important amongst the training partners and I like the fact that we all want to beat each other as we compete yeah. But we all want to see each other do well and to me that is the greatest dynamic ever to, to be able to be happy for someone um, when they do well and Likewise that person happen f happy for you when you do well too, even if, if you know either side of the coin Sure uh, Noah nipped you at the New Balance Indoor mm -hmm. and then you came back the next week and got him did you have to change your mindset? Or what happened to you after you took second in the first 400? Did you go, okay, I gotta reassess this. No, no, no it got me at the end. Did I let up? How do, how do, you, do you deal with that? And, um, um, funny thing is, coach gave us summary plans um, on how to run depending on what position you are after you um, get the break. And the exact race plan coach gave for third place at the break is the exact race plan Noah ran. Coach literally said in the last, on the home straight, in the last 50 meters, he was like the people in first and second most likely might be battling and a space would open up on the inside. So he was like, just wait, stay patient and as soon as you see that space, go. And it's exactly what happened with Noah. He saw the space and he went. So I was happy for him. I mean, I, of course, I'll be a little disappointed that I, I, I lost. But I told him after the race, I was like, if there's anybody to beat me in this race, I know it would have been you because he's been training really well. Yeah. You know, so um, after the defeat, I went back. I was like, well, okay, I went out. I made a lot of mistakes in that race. I went out, I wouldn't say a little bit too fast, but um, being, it, it being my first race, I wasn't sure 
on how to feed. My legs were really fast and sure. I didn't use my legs in competition as yet. Yeah. So um, after running up on Noah in the first 100 meters or so, I was like, oh, maybe you're going too fast. So I kind of backed off and then to get the break, I kind of sped up again. So I made too many moves and coach even came to me after and was like, you made too many moves in the race. So when you tried to make a move on the last part, you was already spent. Um, so I went back and I was like, well, okay, try to run a more steady first 200 and then build upon that. So when we got to New York, um, where in New Balance, I went out in 21-1, 21-17. Um, in New York, I went out in 21-6, wow. way slower. But I still finished faster than I did in, in New Balance. So I was like, well, okay, let me just kind of build the first 200 and then continue on that instead of trying to go too fast on the first two. Because um, sometimes I tend to doubt myself and tell myself that a lot of these um, quarter mile base athletes um, are stronger than me. And um, that kind of makes me want to beat them on the speed part of the race where um, I'm actually still as strong as them. I just need to believe in myself a little bit more. So um, um, that's something I'm working on too. You know? So um, that's what I did. Each and every race I got better because I was able to reassess and then reapply um, everything learned from the races before. In 2021, I'm gonna have a senior moment for a second. Your first foray, 400 indoors, I'd seen you. I think your shoe was untied and you still ran 45.08 or 45.03. Was in, that the, indoors? Was it indoors? That was the was the um, was it one of Paul's meets? Did you run one of Doyle's? Was it mm -mm. 2020? Mm -mm. Or, uh, if it was if it was 2021, 20, 2020, I was trapped in Trinidad during okay. COVID. Uh, 21, I didn't run any 400s at all. Um, and I don't think I I, I I did go to one of uh, Paul's meets. Was it 200? Was, you ran yeah, around okay. 200. Okay. Yeah, okay. In Arkansas. Your ability to go around the turn in the 200, I've always been impressed with. You come off, but you catch people. What is the psychology behind that? I mean, do you can try to control yourself in that first 100 and then let physics do its thing as you come off the turn? So I used to. I honestly used to. That was my old race plan was always to kind of run a steady, a steady turn and build upon it and try to get a slingshot effect you know, coming off um, the turn, but um, all last season, coach was like, you need to run the turn, you need to run the turn. And I was like, well, I'm trying, but I didn't get up to that level where I was able to hit that speed and hold it and then still pick up and hold. Yeah. And um, I would say in Trinidad was where I kind of got my biggest breakthrough. I was able to like actually run the turn. Like you feel like you're going 100% of your max on the turn, but still able to pick up and finish upon yeah. that. Um, so for me is new plans, I guess, to run fast, to run fast in the 200. Anybody listening right now, um, you need to run the turn as simple as that. You need to use that momentum to take you home. And if you can't build up that momentum on the turn and then try to build up on the street, remember um, there's going to be that point where you start to feel fatigue, you start to feel lactic, and you're not going to get faster. At this point, you're kind of just trying to hold. So you need to use your momentum on the turn to take you to the um, finish of the race, to take you down the street as far as you could possibly go. How old were you when you turned pro? Um, this was 2018 was my first pro year. Don't quote me on this, but I feel like I was 24. 20, okay. Yeah, right. It could be 24. And you went to the University of Alabama? Yes, I started at South Plains College first, um, okay. junior college. Yeah. Uh, did two years there, and then I did one year in Alabama. I had one more year eligibility, but after a world championship medal, yeah, uh, had it had to go pro. Had to. The um, the world championships in seventeen changed your life. Yeah. Okay. What um, if you were talking to a room full of uh, high school kids? What would you tell them about um, how to be patient in a career? Oh, uh, that's crazy because um, I'm not the most patient person, um, yeah. but I've learned um, and I've got better, not better at it over the years. What I would say to high school students, I mean, it's always good to set goals for yourself. It's always um, good to set yearly goals, yearly times on what you want to do, but sometimes it doesn't happen on time. I had a lot of plans for myself growing up like I wanted to go pro as a junior athlete I wasn't able to so I had to have a plan B plan B was to go to junior college which I even wanted to go to D1 but I 
didn't have the grades to. Mm -hmm. So that was my plan B was also a plan C. Um, I was trying to go pro out of junior college, didn't run fast enough to, so I had to go to college. So this, these plans that I planned within those years didn't, um, they didn't come to realization. And um, after heading to Alabama, really one of the breakthroughs for me was going to the um, Rio Olympics. I was a reserve on the 4x4 team, did not get to run. Um, the one I remember, the one morning that we um, went to train on the um, Olympic track, I woke up late that morning, so I didn't get to, I didn't even get to touch the track in Rio. Um, but seeing all these Olympic level athletes, experiencing, watching Wade Van Eke break the world record, watching my teammate Marshall Sideno break the national record in the 400, um, seeing Usain Bolt for the first time um, in person, like after seeing all these athletes, I was so motivated. So I was like, well, okay, I have the ability to be on this level with these athletes. It might not happen overnight, but I'm gonna work hard until it happens. Um, that's where patience, um, you know, comes into play. I had to, you know, just sit down and be patient, do all the correct things to make sure that this plan could be successful. And in 2017, I had a breakthrough, but this was something I wanted to do since 2012. And it took so much years, you know, so patience pays off at the end of the day. And um, even if you don't get to your goal, there's going to be some level of progress that you still need to be thankful for. Um, a coach back home once told me, um, I hope I get it right, but I think he said, um, hard work doesn't determine success, but not working hard ensures failure. And that is so true because I've been on both sides of it. I've not worked hard enough and I failed and I've worked very hard and I still fail. But there's a level of progress still to be made even when you work hard. So there's still things to be thankful for. But, um, you know, it's all about patience. In track and field, this is a sport where everyone has a time to shine and um, your time will definitely come around at some point. Um, 2023, what are your goals? Um, definitely my goals for this year is to be on the podium at the Ebola Championships. Um, I'm working very hard, I'm working smart, I'm taking care of my body and um, have a chip on my shoulder for sure from last year, finishing six. But I'm still thankful it's a year, it's a position up from the Olympic year. But um, I definitely want to be a podium finisher again at the World Championship level, you know. So that's definitely something I'm looking forward to again. And what do you want to do in 2024? Ah, 2024. As of now, I've collected every single medal um, except for our Olympic medal. I've had world championship medals, world indoor medals, um, you know, all the major medals there except for our Olympic medal. And I would like to be able to finish the sport and be able to see one of those athletes. I've gotten a medal in every major championship, um, possible Commonwealth medals, you know, so um, that's definitely the goal also to be a uh, individual medalists now however any medal comes i'll be you know satisfied but i'll it means more when you've done it for yourself you know sure. um there's there's nothing like an individual in individual medal well Dre richards i've seen you at all of your world championships and uh, your olympics and uh, i've really enjoyed watching you compete and thank you again you're always a great interview thank you and thank we're you. with uh, this is larry eater with run blog run with dream richards he is the uh, bronze medals from the World Championships in 2017 London yep. in Commonwealth medalist mm -hmm. and uh, four by four for uh, his home country and an Adidas sponsored athlete. And uh, I recall, was it a year ago when you set a national record indoors? I had to give, Sp I sent Spencer a note and said, hey, I hope you're giving him his bonus, man, for that <laughs> one. And that got you to crack up pretty good. That was a, one of the, my favorite moments on TV. Because yeah. someone, I think um, Lewis uh, Johnson asked you about that and was teasing yeah, you yeah. a little bit too. So that kept it fun. But uh, thank you so much. Really yeah, appreciate man, it. You.